we get to the final address of the final session of the second day. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, I forgot your name. Enrique Soriano. Okay, sorry. Sorry for forgetting that. That's too much to take care of. So, please go ahead. I don't know what I put myself, but <laughs> go forward. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about the, about the titles and the, and the font, because it seemed to be okay with the... With the sorry, Enrique. You have to speak to the microphone. Yeah. Keep, keep it close to the okay. So uh, sorry about the the fonts that we have chosen, but it seems that there is an issue with the with the projector. Okay, so let's go for the for the presentation. The presentation is about how we we are handling with PBF data uh, using WebGL. First of all, to say that uh, this pr this project has been funded by the Copernicus uh, program. So, and uh, specifically the emergency management system, uh, sorry, part uh, area. So uh, we will analyze the 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 problems and uh, the main goals to to achieve. Uh, first of all, uh, an introduction of to give you some background of what the Copernicus emergency management si system is doing. When there is a natural disaster, you can think in a, in a typhoon, in a earthquake, or for example, in floods, uh, a complex system is put in place. They fly all the satellites over the zone, and a team of quite a lot of people start to digitalize, the same as the, the HOT initiative in the, with, o, with OpenStreetMap. And they are complementary. They also use the, the OpenStreetMap data. So uh, finally, as a result of this mapping of the, of the areas, uh, maps for field work are produced, but uh, well, uh, they are produced in, in PDF. So uh, it came to it came to to evolve uh, to to a map viewer, where the people in the in the field could choose what to see, what zoom level, uh, move, uh, query, and, and so on, interact with the with information. So uh, in that moment. The Copernicus team started to think in an appropriate uh, architecture for all these uh, all these map viewer. In principle, uh, they thought in a in a classical approach where you have a database, where you have a geo server, where you have uh, map tiling services, uh, and so on. But uh, they have uh, they have some well some constraints about time about uh, keeping the uh, about keeping the the service up uh, scaling and so on and uh, it was decided they know not to use database not to use any server backend for WMS services like your server and so on and consume only the static uh, data uh, so, how can you consume those data without uh, without any any server, any well, any server that is transforming the data and so on? For the vector data consumption, uh, we have uh, we had a lot of features to manage for each of the disasters uh, when a disaster is produced, about a half a million uh, features. So it was mandatory the use of WebGL. Same for OpenStreetMap data that they are using, and uh, that was when it came the analysis on the on the structure the, on the architecture to use WMS, WMS tiled, and WFS will need a, a server if you do not uh, cache it to to serve all, all this data. Uh, which means that uh, that uh, you will need to to ma maintain that infrastructure. So, given that uh, today our laptops are quite a server themselves in in performance and memory, it was thought to use the latest stack uh, standard to serve the the data, the vector data and all the rendering was taking place in the client. And because of the high number of features to be rendered, the use of WebGL was really mandatory. So it was proposed, the, the stack as said, 
and uh, the PBF was the, the selected format. Uh, we are also consuming uh, raster data as Cox. We again had the same discussion if we use WMS, WMT, MMS style, and so on. And finally, we what we did is to use also the stack data catalog and produce there the the Cox and consuming it by by a radiant earth proxy in a first approach. And now we are moving to GOT FIO. So in the server side, what we have is a folder structure that I, uh, well, just just let you know that you will have folders for each uh, disaster. This is a disaster. This is the area of interest. These are several versions. And you have folders in each of them. And following the stack specification in each of the levels, you have a catalog JSON, which is pointing the child and the, and the parents folder. And, and that's it. On top of it, uh, we have everything ready to put uh, in place a client consuming that architecture. That uh, simply goes there. See, uh, we have a, an open API service to know which are the these emergencies activated. Uh, sorry. These emergencies to navigate up to there, and once you are here, uh, the client is autonomous to navigate up and down the all the all the infrastructure. So uh, it was uh, all the folders ha have the PBF uh, tile and also the the Cox tiles, and now what we had to do is a research on the existing uh, uh, frameworks to develop all the solution in the in the client side. In principle, we thought about open layers, of course. Uh, they have PBF rendering. It has a good performance in, in general, but it didn't use uh, WebGL for the vector tiles by the time, OK? So uh, when really the performance is good, but when it manages half million uh, and half million features, it really is, uh, it really couldn't manage that that amount of data. So uh, we made a proof of concept and we saw that the performance was not good. Uh, it's also important to say that his, it has been quite a also a research project because we have not seen or we have not been able to find uh, such a architecture and such uh, and such with such pretended performance with such number of features in the in the in a production environment that we could uh, that we could be led by so uh, then we moved to to try to make a proof of concept on kepler gl Kepler EL, I don't know uh, if you are familiar with it. It, it uses you have Mapbox on top of Kepler. You have the EL, which adds a, a layer with React JS, and then you have Kepler on top of it. We analyze it and we said, "Wow, it's it's cool. If it works, uh, we have everything done because it's a, it has everything laying. It has uh, filtering, querying, all all you can do with the Web EL. Uh, we have it." Done. So, in principle, uh, it I it is okay. But the thing is that Kepler, uh, sorry, is oriented to. I don't know if you have used it, but you upload a JSON, you upload a, a file, and then you display it. Okay. <coughs> and uh, for us, for our defined stack architecture where the PBFs are tiled and so on. Uh, we needed to make some uh, development there. Uh, well, it's oriented, as I said, to a single JSON, but uh, we only had to load the, the HTTP sources for the PBF, then manage it at the different zoom levels, that then also manage, manage the, the tiling at each zoom level, and also merge it as, as they arrived. Mm, we contacted the community. Uh, they didn't have anything. They have anything like something like this, like this ongoing, 
and we try to make the, pr the proof of concept. But for PBF uh, tile, we, we were not in time and resources to make it work. So uh, even with the, with the community support, uh, as this is aligned for Kepler also, we needed to, to leave it behind. So uh, what we did was uh, go a step back. Kepler is built on the KL. So let's go to the KL because uh, Kepler is constrained to the JSON on top of it, the single file. So let's go to deck that it is not constrained with it. Uh, deck again, it's built on Mapbox EL and has React JS components. So it seemed in principle okay, fine, we can go with it. And indeed, we started programming. We made a, a plugin with with deck. Uh, the performance was was good. We could be able to load the, the PBF, manage the tiling, uh, and so on. But in certain cases, as the components with React were already uh, built, uh, how it manages the, the calls and the callbacks to the, to the server uh, caused some blocking. So we had some issues that we were not able to to solve. In all of this, I'm not saying that anything of these options is wrong. Just in our time and con with our con constraints, we were not able to make it work, OK? So uh, again, we had to make the last step back and get to, to Mapbox EL. And then, on top of it, uh, we started to make, uh, let's say, our own deck and our own uh, Kepler GL. We have developed all these tools, these plugins, as as React component. We have uh, we have integrated Mapbox in, in React, and uh, the performance is very good. And finally, something that is mm, quite uh, straightforward, maybe for all of you. If you are using PBF, try to put all your layers in a single PBF, <laughs> okay? Maybe you have struggled with it, maybe maybe not, but if you put, uh, for example, uh, you have 10 layers and you have 10 PBF, you will have 10 calls to the, to the server. And when it is tiled and when it is 50 layers, it comes to 500 calls and then you get blocked by, even by the, by the own browser. So uh, that's just a hint, probably you know, but uh, store all your, all your layers in a, in a single PBF. So now what we have, what we have here is uh, a viewer consuming a, a serverless uh, infrastructure that could retrieve and, and take the, the PBF data and render it. So uh, we had a very, very loose styles. And the next step was to render the, the layers with an appropriate style uh, and do it in the, in the client side. Because all we have is raw data with the, with the PBF. So for this, <coughs> for this, uh, for these uh, data layers that are, that are, um, that are stored in a single PBF, what we have done is to define a specific style for each of them. And also default styles because each activation, each emergency needs has different needs in terms of layers, names, and so on. So uh, what we have done is to put in the, in the structure in the, in the previous one, uh, in this structure, I'm sorry about the, the this but uh, well we have a, a folder with the styles so the the browser also also pick up the styles and render it uh, uh, as it receives the the PBF and again the performance is quite good uh, then this is this has been made for the for the PBF data that has been uh, produced by the data providers when an emergency is activated. But also, of course, 
OSM has data that can be that is very useful uh, for an for an this kind of emergencies. So uh, we follow the same approach for OpenStreetMap data and integrated also a PBF in the in the viewer. So when you have an emergency, you consume the PBF that are produced by Copernicus and also the PBF that are produced by, uh, to to OpenStreetMap. Again, we we render it all in the viewer, and uh, we render the styles uh, using the tags uh, and so on, but in the in the client, and the performance is also uh, good. How do we do it? We do it with uh, Maputnik. Again, I don't, I don't know if you are familiar with with this with these tools. But Maputnik, what allows you to do is to load a, a PBF and offers you a, a very straightforward interface. So you can define an, an style uh, for a layer, considering in real time, considering the tasks, the filters, the colors, the scales, and so on. Just like if you were using a, a desktop uh, application. And with it, uh, and this is it. With it, what we have achieved has been to to be able to to render the the data. In I'm sorry, but I think it doesn't seem. Wow, well, I will need to be in front of. Okay, and what we have here is the. I don't see where the mouse is, sorry. Mm. What we have here is... Uh, yes, is it where I left? Okay. Maybe now you do it here on this side and you can look at it. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. The thing here is that we are requesting in real time all the data to the server. We have a uh, quite a poor connection here. I'm sorry for this, but all these that you are seeing on top of the satellite are PBFs that are being downloaded in, in real time, and they are represented as they arrive. As you can see, it, it's uh, inst it has an instant representation once the information uh, arrives. So. Uh, the the only constraint here is the bandwidth that that you have for this for this data. We are using WebGL, and uh, Mapbox also provides uh, such. Uh, yes, please. I don't have more hands. <laughs> so this this kind of functionalities that you can do, look at the at the labels uh, and so on. What you can do with the with the with all of these tricks that well pe people like uh, to play with. And then you can move to another area and zoom in and zoom out, so they can easily move with the with all of this uh, information without having an static uh, an static um, map as it was had before with the with the PBFs. Another, uh, I'm sorry, how can I change? No. Can I change the tab? Sorry, the tab. The oh, tab, I don't, I'm not seeing the... Uh, usually control tab. Change it, okay. And this, what you have are seeing here is a cog that is being displayed also in real time. We have not talked about cog because this presentation complements another one in the morning uh, with regard to the server part. But here we have a cog that is being consumed Okay, with the with the Ryan Radian Earth plugin that is making us uh, the tiling of the of the cog, cog and translating it to to uh, to an image that can be interpreted by by the browser uh, as it is. We are migrating this this cog to to use a, a client only. A, a client only uh, consumer let's say without any proxy so there is no 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 server dependencies when you are retrieving the cog using geotiff io as the <laughs> the library that you 
have been able to see in the in the opera room. So in, in principle, yes. So in principle, uh, we will have this this all working with as much as serverless as possible. You only drop the data in the folder structure. You retrieve it. Imagine you have only an Apache or an S3 Amazon to serve the data. That's it. That's the goal. No complex architecture. No performance issue because everything is done in your own server, which is your your computer. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Enrique. So anyone would like to contribute, please remember to speak to the microphone. Anyone? You're craving for the dinner, I imagine. <laughs> All right, so then we'll close this session. I would like to thank the speakers in first place, the technical team, which were very helpful, if, even though we were not seeing, they were giving some important hints to us. And thank you all for coming to this session, and I hope that you have an enjoyable dinner later tonight. See you then.